Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. It's not full screening. It's it's upsetting me. Why? Full screen. Full screen. Nope. It'll, we'll have to do. It'll have to do. All right. Um, Jesus Christ, I have too many tabs. Wait. All right, let's go. Ready? Original link to the video, top of the description. Again, thank you, uh, Terry Allen, over on Discord for the recommendation. Let's get started. All the links. My name's Connor. If you're new, hello. I'm a little tired, but I'm ready to learn. I'm like physically tired, not mentally tired. This is Salisbury Cathedral, one of the most impressive and fascinating medieval buildings in Britain. Very nice. Nice grass, Today, too. exclusively for the History Hit YouTube channel, we're going to peel back the layers of the past and uncover... I would like more than anything... Well, not more than anything. Almost anything. To be able to go back in time and just see hundreds of years ago, before Industrial Age, before Industrial Revolution, when... Because I'm sure there was just a lot more practical immediate math that you had to do rather than a lot of math that had to go into creating the machines and i think that would be really cool to see just how they would go about building something like this without heavy machinery cover some of the most intriguing snippets of hidden history that you've probably never heard about Time talking demon batting graffiti england football demon? shirts and even a reality tv show Gastral? i hope you're sitting comfortably because there's a lot to discover these are the secrets of Salisbury Cathedral. Let's go. She's great too, Alice. She's no Dan Snow, but she, she's great. So here we are, one of the greatest architectural marvels in Britain and a building steeped in 800 years of history. But it all started with an argument. The original cathedral was built two miles away to sites known today as Old Sarum. This had originally been an Iron Age hill fort, then a Roman encampment, then a Saxon fort, before reaching its glory as a Norman bastion. A cathedral and a royal castle was built there by William the Conqueror after the Norman Conquest. It was a pretty important place, and it's even believed that the Doomsday Book, the survey of land ownership in England, which was ordered by the king in 1086, was written by priests there. But by 1217, the bishops and priests at Old Beautiful Sarum area. had started to complain. It's too cramped, they grumbled. It's noisy and cold, and the water supply is awful. Once more, we're finding it hard to work with the castle guards. All in all, it's just not a suitable working environment. And so Hope in the 1218, okay. Pope Honorius III gave in. He issued a papal bull. Mm. So in 1218, Pope Honorius III gave in. He issued a papal bull, and a new cathedral was to be built on a new site in the river valley below. This was New Serum, or Salisbury. Papal bull? How exactly did they choose the location? Well, the legend goes that the bishop shot an arrow in the air, declaring, where this lands, I will build my new church. The arrow hit a white stag, and the spot which it died was chosen as the location for the new cathedral. Work okay, on the new it. cathedral started straight oh, away, and the foundation stones were laid on the 28th of April, 1220. The ceremony was watched by a great crowd of people who shouted and wept for joy. The materials were brought to the site by men, women and children working, carrying goods, tending to animals and providing food and drink. By 1258, the cathedral was consecrated and within just 38 years, they had completed the main body of the cathedral. So everything but the tower and the spire. That's pretty speedy as cathedrals go. Because this first stage was completed. I have an idea. There we go. I hit F11. Why didn't I think of that earlier? So quickly, it had a single consistent architectural style, the early English Gothic. It used 70,000 tons of stone, 3,000 tons of timber, 
and 450 tons of lead. It was during these years that the city of Salisbury was laid out on a grid system and it was in the 1300s that they completed the cathedral by adding the spire, which at 123 metres is now the tallest in the country. All the stone here was prepared on site in the stonemason's yard. Hi, Gary. Hi, Alice. How are you? Hi, good to see you. Are you? Yeah, not too bad, thanks. Good. So we're in the drawing office now um, of the stonemason's yard, okay. and we're working on this elevation of the cathedral here, which is the east end, which is the oldest part of the cathedral. Um, 1220 they started, and we need to replace over 1,100 stones just on that elevation. <laughs> wow through all the wind and the erosion. And these are the drawings of, of this blue area. Wow. And all the red that you see dotted over the drawings is stone replacements. And generally, as a rule of thumb, the higher up of, of this blue area. Wow. And all the red that you see dotted over the drawings is stone replacements. And generally, as a rule of thumb, the higher up you go, the more stone replacements you get due to the wind and the rain Makes and sense. certain elements. Uh, and what happens is these all get marked on by the cathedral architect. It goes to various committees um, in order to get approved. And you've got, you know, less weight bearing down on the bricks as you go up, which I'm sure kind of solidifies or makes it harder to break off. It goes to various committees um, in order to get approved. Once it's been approved, the mason can go onto the scaffold armed with their tape measure and, and their notepad um, and they take the measurements and the templates and then they bring it back into the drawing office here and they will set it all out on card like this. Um, once it's been done on card, this will stay in here. We then produce a plastic template which is exactly the same, which then will go out into the saw shop for the sawyer to choose the correct block of stone. Um, and he will saw it six sides into a 3D shape and try and cut out as much of the waste as he can to make it easier for the stonemason to work, basically. Okay. I'm in frame, right, guys? Yeah, all right. So what's this wall then here? It's called the inspiration wall. Okay. And this is where the stonemasons will come. If there's a piece of carbon on the cathedral, generally it's eroded away so much that you can't really tell what it is. So they come in here to get inspiration because they will have to design something from scratch. Either a, a, a head, for instance, we've got a lot of sheep's heads on the tower or wolf's heads um, or, you know, or even human heads. Or it could be a bit of stiff leaf carving like this. So it needs to be gothic in style. But gothic generally means the chisel goes in quite far so you can okay. get a lot of shadow. But oh, God. What, uh, goth. Gothic architecture. Just, okay. Right, but, okay imposing style of medieval European architecture that developed, okay. So just imposing, long pointed arches. So Gothic is just kind of like grand, very purposefully imposing kind of structures. Okay, 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 okay. How do I get back? Great, good. But with that, you get a few issues with stones falling off years to come. But it, it, it looks incredible, especially from the ground. Amazing. So we're in the banker shop now. It's quite loud because we've got an extraction system on, which okay. sucks the fine dust out, out of the end of the chisel. Bad for your you lungs or something? Oh, yeah, going up here. Yeah. So this is Joe. He's our, he's our new apprentice. And what he's doing as one of his tasks, he's working a block by hand using the traditional technique technique and it is a lot harder than you think because that that surface needs to be completely flat i i can tell it it's difficult because i can't really understand even what he's trying to hit and because he, he just has it so down so as soon as he encounters any minute little abrasion he, he's just hitting it and trying to make it as 
How old is sandpaper? Well, you can't. Anything. Wait, that, never mind. That surface needs to be completely flat. Yeah, you're not. So if it's not, you need to take what it am I talking again about? And again. So basically, masonry is flat surfaces and chamfers if you break it down. And, and then you add all the other bits later. This is Carol. Uh, and Carol's working a lower weathering stone on the cathedral. Okay. And she's not using a, a mallet at the moment. She's using what they call a metal dummy. Okay. Uh, it, it's a bit more responsive, metal on metal. Um, and she's using a gouge. So all of these chisels, really, they're kind of how what the medieval masons used to use. Nothing much has changed, apart from you feel, just feel the weight of that. Yeah, it's heavy. Isn't it? Feel how sharp it is. It is really extremely sharp. Yeah. The only thing we've added now is a is a thin sliver of tungsten at the end of the chisel. Super hard because it lasts metal, a lot right? longer. And okay. it stays sharper for longer and gives you a better cut in the stone. Tungsten, I believe, has the highest melting point of um any metal. I just learned that in a video. With... So if you work a stone with a sharp chisel, it so will smart. last longer in the building. And how long is Carol? A stone with a sharp chisel, it will last longer in the building. And how long has Carol been working on this? And how long will it take to complete this piece? Um, I think she's been working on this for several days, so it might be another couple of days, so three or four days in total. Okay. But most of it was sawn already, as we saw before, and this big piece was cut out on the saw just to make it a lot easier and speed the process up. Okay, but why does she need all of this? I, I, I'd imagine that getting this sort of dust in your lungs is not good, but the other guy, he had the vacuum thing, obviously, but he didn't even have a mask or anything on, so... And then they generally put their banker mark on their stones. Oh, right. Okay. So do we have any of these that we can see? Yeah, yeah. We, yeah, if we I have. You missed him explain here. that, this sorry. This is a bit of stiff leaf carving. Yeah. But here, you've Frog? got a gecko, oh. a gecko, oh, gecko carved into there. Jesus. How beautiful. Yeah, it is lovely, isn't it? It's amazing how much detail they put in, considering they're so far yeah, away. Yeah, they're so high up, <laughs> yeah. But, you know, when they were building a cathedral 800 years ago, it, it didn't matter where it was on the building. It was still just as good quality. God yeah. can see us. Because God can see everywhere, basically. <laughs> He's checking your there work. There are some extraordinary and exquisite designs in here. The attention to detail was truly breathtaking. And without further ado, it was time to ascend the cathedral and see some of the stonework on display in situ. You might think I'm religious because I love cathedrals and stuff. I'm not at all, really. I, I don't mind religion. I went through my sort of militant, not militant, but like, Oh, religions, I'm much more calm. I, you know, nothing wrong with religion. I'm just not religious, and I love the architecture um, part of it and the historical I just part, to for show sure. You this because it's very rare that we get to replace quite a few stones, all new, in a run. Generally, we will replace one stone, leave the other, and vice versa. But here, look, you can see all, all new stones have recently been added, and this is called Dogtooth String Course. Um, and the reason why it's called dog tooth because it resembles a canine tooth mm. from a distance, basically. And that's and quite a traditional medieval style, isn't it? Yeah, it's re really deep cut in order for you to get the shadow from the ground. And then these are called uh, double springers because okay. they spring either side, basically. Okay. So it's per perfectly symmetrical, each of those. It's beautiful. Yeah, it is lovely, isn't it? <laughs> oh, look at this. So we're now at the top of St. Stephen's Chapel on the East End, um, and th this is the gable. So they just recently fixed this gablet stone with fleur-de-lis on each side, and you've got a circular drum. And then on top of that is going to be a cross with a cross piece that they're going to fix probably tomorrow. Um, and it's just literally been fixed within the last 10 minutes or so. Wow, look at that. So brand new. The brand newest new. piece of Bolton Cathedral. Yeah. And the reason why this is cool. a different colour to this is because this has been wet and that is that's dried out right. so once it all gets wet it'll all be the same color i'm not sure i understand what you're saying <laughs> sorry about that don't worry Siri? gary i understand you after my tour with the stonemasons it was time to head down to the and morning then my phone goes off chapel where they after my tour with the stonemasons, it was time to head down to the morning chapel, where there is clear evidence that the builders of the cathedral were finding the job quite a challenge. I want to see them build an arch. This is a ledger tomb. That just means a tomb which is flat. 
And if you look carefully, you can see a mason, perhaps after a long day of work, was carving out the word cathedral. And he made a mistake. <laughs> Just like a, a teacher would on a, on a school paper. It's like, oh, H. Missing out the H. That's fantastic. That makes it even better. That makes it so much better because it just makes you connect more. It's like this is a person that lived back in this time, and I like it more with the mistake than if it didn't. And he's trying to squash it in above here. Another unusual detail in the morning chapel is this carved figure who appears to be of North African descent. Well, some have suggested this could be St. Morris. This seems hard to believe when he's depicted as full of character, not like the usual formal depiction you see with saints. A general consensus within the cathedral is that he might have been one of the stonemasons, and so he could have been working on this very building. This is a Chantry Chapel. Chantry chapels were mostly built from 1300 to the 1530s. It was a place to chant or sing prayers to God for a dead person's soul. Originally, this would have been decorated with bright colors and all sorts of statues. It would have been a beautiful space. My favorite detail is this carved butterfly above the entrance. We have no idea why it's there, though. Oh. This is the tomb of one of the earliest of Salisbury's bishops, Bishop Osmond, who had accompanied William Duke of Normandy to England. He was made a saint in 1457, and that meant the cathedral could tap into the lucrative trade of pilgrimages. So he's actually in there? How did they, uh... Like, you're not, so you're not rotting inside or something. The holes in the sides of the tomb are called foramina, and they allowed sick people to reach in, perhaps put an injured arm or leg in, get close to Osma's body, and hope that it might be cured. Bishop Osmond had originally been buried at Old Serum, but they dug up his remains and reburied him here, 120 years after his death. And the, the arches, I'm sorry, just the arches. How are they all so perfect? I, I just feel like if you went off by just a little bit, especially towards the beginning, you could end up being super far off. This remains Sorry, guys. This I remains had to take a break there. Let's finish up. We buried him here 120 years after his death and gave him a great lavish shrine, which was... Where did I end up? Uh, yeah, the, the, the arches. I said that when I, I left like an hour ago. Okay. Buried at Old Serum, but they dug up his remains and reburied him here 120 years after his death and gave him a great lavish shrine which was dazzlingly ornate. Look at how detailed that is. Gave him a great lavish shrine which was dazzlingly ornate. Of course, this great shrine is nowhere to be seen. Like so many, it was destroyed under the orders of Henry VIII. This is the tomb of William Longsby. His nickname Longsby is generally taken as a reference to his great physical height and the enormous weapons that he used. He was the first person to be buried in Salisbury. His height or sorry. Cathedral. He was the enormous weapons that he used. He was the first person to be buried in Salisbury Cathedral. He was the illegitimate son of Henry II and so the half-brother of King Richard and King John. But his birthright was recognized and he was given the hand of marriage to Ella of Salisbury, the richest woman in the country. They were happily married and they had eight children. But almost three decades into their marriage, William, after spending some time abroad, suddenly went missing. In his absence, a man named Hubert de Burr approached Ella and proposed that she marries his own nephew. Ella refused. Soon after her Guys, husband, William... My phone was making noises. I had to silent it. The richest woman in the recognized, and he was given the hand of marriage to Ella of Salisbury, the richest woman in the country. They were happily married and they had eight children. But almost three decades into their marriage, William, after spending some time abroad, suddenly went missing. In his absence, a man named Hubert de Burr approached Ella and proposed that she marries his own nephew. Ella refused. Soon after, her husband William emerged from this mystery disappearance. It turned out his ship was nearly lost in a storm, and while returning to England in 1225, he spent some months in refuge in a monastery on a French. 
instant communication is crazy okay i want to say it's the most I, I say this like in in war videos i watch like battle videos and history videos and and how much instant communication is a game changer especially on the battlefield when you have so many spur of the moment things you have to decisions you have to make and it's going to help if you know information of what's going on around you with your armies but this is another example of just it's so crazy how like i think we take for granted how we are so new to instant communication how long have we had it 1800s probably was the was the telegraph I think there were some communications like telegraph or something that would take like 25 minutes to go across the world because you have to like pin it to to certain stations. But even that I want to consider kind of instant communication just because it's such a, a leap up from what you used to have to do. And it's stuff like that. It's like you don't know if your husband's dead or not. You have no idea what happened. <laughs> And so how long do you have to wait to be like, okay, remarry? And if they show up again and you're remarried, what, are, are you still married or? Island. Hubert what? made his profuse apologies and invited them over for a banquet to clear the air, a great gesture of friendship. But not long after this, William died, with some chroniclers claiming he was poisoned by Hubert. The story seemed to be lost to the mists of time, until when they opened up the tomb several centuries later, they found this rat amongst the bones of William Longsby. The rat had nibbled through the wooden tomb and then it nibbled on the bones. And what they found is that this rat died of arsenic poisoning. How did they know that? Wait. It's up through the wooden tomb. Wait, when? Rat. Until when they opened up the tomb several centuries later, they found this rat amongst the bones of William Longsby. The rat had nibbled through the wooden tomb and then it nibbled on the bones. And what they found is that this rat died of arsenic poisoning. I don't want to take that as for sure he was murdered because I don't know the methods of determining. Oh, okay. It's a murder mystery worthy of any Agatha Christie novel. And there are plenty more weird and wonderful delights in Salisbury Cathedral too. This is the bumping stone when a new chorister joined... It was basically like, oh, marry me. It's like, oh, he made it back. It's like, oh, marry me, your husband's gone. No, I'm not going to. Oh, he made it back. Oh, great. Let's make up. Let's come over here. And then just drop a little. Okay, it's a nice story, but I just, I hate sugarcoating. I'm not just going to accept an interesting story because it sounds interesting. I just want to know what happened. And so when something is almost like too perfect for a interesting story, I almost want to not believe it. But maybe that's causing me not to be logical. I'm thinking too much joins here. The two. This is the bumping stone. When a new chorister joins the choir, his head is gently bumped seven times on this stone to mark his official entry. It's different for girls. When they join the choir, they are bumped on the head seven times with a large prayer book. Here we go. Welcome Better to the Free Cathedral Choir. <laughs> kind of comfy, actually. How beautiful that is. Don't tell me that groove was made from the heads. I drank too much coffee. I can tell I'm too talkative. In 1445, it was stress. decided that the priests needed a dedicated space for serious study, and so a library and lecture room were built above the cloisters. In the library, the books were chained to the shelves to stop them being borrowed. In the library today, there are around 12,000 books, including some of which that date back to the 9th century, which were written in the original cathedral of Old Sarum. This is one of my favourite books in the library. It's the Theatrum Botanicum, which was by John Parkinson. And he was pretty well connected at the time. He became the apothecary to James I and the botanist to Charles I. And this book is just full of these incredible illustrations. I love this page. The common mugwort. Here's the small mugwort. 
the fruitful mugwort. <laughs> Useful. <laughs> As I have a super old book, I think it's a Bible from, and it's written on it, Leicester, England. And I think that's from my great, great, or my, my, no. But I open it and it has a fern leaf in it that looks super old. The cathedral has thousands of explorations of David, of Dr. Livingston. I can't believe I found that so fast. I don't want to take it out. I thought that was cool. The cathedral has thousands of pieces of graffiti all over it. Look at these circular marks opposite the pulpit. These were designed to entrap evil spirits. The concentric circles were supposed to attract the demon's eye. Once it had followed the circles to the center, so the theory went, it would be unable to escape. It's like a lobster trap. The it's most like a impressive crab trap. feature of the cathedral is probably the tower with its great spire, which has been described as cloud busting. For many years, it has been used as a beacon for those traveling to Salisbury from miles around. However, the spire has proved to be troublesome. Together with the tower, it added 6,500 tons to the weight of the abbey. And so Troubling or not, whatever, it is freaking beautiful. Amazing. So it was quite precarious. Indeed, the spires of Malmesbury Abbey, Lincoln Cathedral, Old St. Paul's Cathedral, and Chichester Cathedral all collapsed, and Salisbury's spire would have met the same fate had it not been supported by buttresses, bracing arches, and anchor irons over the centuries. Confident in the anchor structure's iron. rigidity, I headed up the tower's spiraling stairs. I love and spiraling staircases. Up and up. Like, uh, along with my love of grass, I love spiraling staircases, all right? I don't I can't explain it. Spiraling stairs, round and round, up and up. And look at this detail on the west window. These stained glass shields date from the 13th century. This one bears the coat of arms of Eleanor of Provence. This one shows the French fleur de lis. And this one shows the coat of arms of King Henry III. You might recognize England. it because these are the three lions of the England football shirts. Rooney. These Where's are put log yeah. holes, literally for putting logs in. They're kind of remnants of the medieval scaffolding, and there used to be beams that would be in here. And you can even see there are some beams that have been left in place. In 1668, Christopher Wren visited the cathedral to inspect the roof and see how it might be strengthened. He recommended, we think, some of these diagonal beams, and these were actually taken from ship's masts cut in two. This is the clock chamber, and it's a real hodgepodge of wow. supports and beams which are trying to strengthen this lower part of the tower over the years. We've got a mixture of Victorian and medieval and ones from all parts of history. And you can see there's a lot of tension in this room. Here are some ties which were put in by Christopher Wren. And this one here is bent under the pressure, and there's even one in this corner which has snapped completely. And up I climbed once again, around these great set of wooden spiraling stairs, up to the bell chamber. Now up here in the bell chamber is quite a remarkable piece of graffiti. 1864. It's from William Jarrett, who was up here collecting bird's eggs for his dinner. But something went wrong and he's recorded it here. It reads, William Jarrett fell from this pier, spelt pear, on the 29th day of March, 1864 AD. But he was fine, he survived the mishap. Luckily, he was wearing a cloak and it got caught on one of the cathedral pinnacles and he was left hanging to be rescued. Like Neville Longbottom in Harry Potter. Dude. Oh my God, I love this. Like, I, I love this for the same reason I would just love any um, stonework or being able to just touch any part of the cathedral and that people were once touching this in real time back then, making the uh, the cathedral or whatever building or monument, whatever they're they're making. And this is just a more obvious form of just how I can just imagine someone back in 1864 just 
such a great connection to the past. Very much hoping I would not replicate William's accident, I traveled even further up the tower to some pretty dizzying heights. Up here from the base of the spire, it's quite high up, I'm not sure if I really like it, but you do get amazing views of the city and beyond. So you can see the High Street, you can see St. Thomas's Church, and beyond that you can see Old Sarum, that flat-topped hill. That's where the old cathedral used to be. Oh, look at this. Now you might think that we're pretty high up here already, but we're not even halfway up to the top of the spire. This is where we are here with the windlass at the bottom. Yeah. And then there are 10 more ladders to go to this point here. And then there's a door that takes you to the outside. And for the last few meters, you've got to climb up yourself. Do it. Luckily, we weren't able to reach the dizzying heights of the top of the spire. And I was quite relieved when we finally returned to is that where you get can exit out right there and then back to ground level where's fred dibna when you, you need him and if you stand beneath the spire and look up at the supporting pillars you'll notice they actually curve under the weight above supports were added of course which meant it hasn't actually collapsed yet it wasn't just the spire which has been the source of architectural angst. The cathedral has foundations that are only four feet deep. It's built on the gravel floodplain of the River Avon, the watery base holding everything in place. What? If this base dries out, the whole church will come tumbling down. I, I, so thought, dry, I thought it would be the opposite, that, that as it's more wet soil, it would... Every day, somebody comes here, lifts this small stone in the nave, and sticks this long dipping stick into the foundations to make sure there's still water beneath. Now, normally this is done by a cathedral guy, but I've got special permission today to just give it a little wiggle. I am so caught up. My intuition tells me, and who's this? I'm not saying my intuition is the most reliable, but that this would be the opposite of good. <laughs> And then out it comes, and look, there's the water line, which means we're still safe. <laughs> Phew. You guys know how they would test depths in ships back in the day by, like, having a bunch of ropes on a separated, uh, equally separated knots on a rope, and they would toss it down um, to see if they were getting close, to, like, dangerous areas? But how would you, how do they, because as the boat is moving and you're trying to measure it, then the rope is going to s kind of sling diagonally. Um, I was thinking about this the other day. <laughs> because of these foundations, there's no crypt in Salisbury Cathedral and no burials under the floor either. So why are there tombstones here on the ground? Well, for hundreds of years, they buried the dead outside in a graveyard. But in the 1780s, when funds were low and they needed to patch up the floor, they simply borrowed a few from outside. This octagonal room with its slender central pillar is the Chapter House. It's got an amazing medieval frieze showing stories from the books of Genesis and Exodus, including Adam and Eve, Noah, the Tower of Babel, and Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I know, I'm sure people kind of get tired of, like, foreigners talking about England and being like, this reminds me of Harry Potter, but I so have wanted to say this reminds me of Harry Potter throughout this video. I just didn't want to because there's so much stuff that's amazing already, and to just be like, oh, it's like Harry Potter. Probably a bit annoying, but man, it's like Harry Potter. It looks like it. In the center is the bishop's seat, and they put on display here the mitre, that's the hat, and the crook, this stick which is still used as part of the bishop's official dress. A crook is used by shepherds to herd sheep and refers to a bishop's role in leading the faithful, following the model of Jesus. But what I love here is this three-faced figure. This might have represented the trinity or suggested that the bishop was an all-seeing figure. Behind this curtain is perhaps the most important historical document in British history. It is Magna, Magna Carta. Carta, Latin for the Great Charter. Only four copies of Magna Carta dating from 1215 have survived the ravages of time, and the one in Salisbury is the best preserved. Wow. 
Magna Carta is a charter of rights which was agreed by King John in 1215 and it marked the first time there had been an attempt to officially limit the powers of the king. Which means that the Magna Carta and limiting the powers of the king came extremely early on in uh well, the history of England, which, you know, 1066 is what we... It was so significant. It's played start. an important role in British and international human rights ever since. I know there were kings before that, It was written that, in medieval that... Latin, and they used quill pens on sheets of parchment made from sheepskin. In some of the later versions, they have a great royal seal, which was added by an official called a spigernal. Who... All right, let me take that back. I know England, you know, can have kings, and the history stretches back further back from... 1066, I, I know that. He made the seal using a special seal press using beeswax and resin. Recently, the very survival of the Magna Carta was put into doubt. Shortly before 5 p.m. on the 25th of October 2018, just as the cathedral was winding down for the day, disaster struck. A man wielding a hammer made his way to the Magna Carta and began smashing the glass case. The arms went off surrounding around the whole cathedral. The man was wrestled to the ground and the cathedral was evacuated. Who was it? What did they do to him? Hopefully... Luckily, the cathedral's Sorry. security system stood up to the test, and the precious document remained unharmed. What was his point? What was the point he was trying to make? That he wants a more absolute monarchy of prior to the 13th century? What was his point? Or did he just want to destroy English history? And if that's the case... Leave them to me. Now, there is absolutely no excuse to be late for anything here, for Salisbury Cathedral has the oldest working mechanical clock in the world. This was made in 1386, and incredibly, it still works. Where's the clock face? I know you're thinking. Well, it doesn't have one. In fact, this wasn't even used to tell the time. This was to tell you the hours of prayer, and it would tell you this by ringing out on the hour. The mechanism oh. here is driven by falling weights, which have to be wound up once a day. It was in operation until 1884, when it was placed in storage and forgotten, until someone found it in an attic in 1928, and they finally got it going again in the 50s. To date, it has ticked more than five five billion times. Of course, the English Civil War left its mark here too. In 1644, the cathedral was plundered by a parliamentarian force and its plate investments sent to London to be shown before the House of Commons. The heaviest fighting in the city was towards the end of the war in 1644 and 1645. When the parliamentarians barricaded themselves into the belfry, the royalists set fire to the door and smoked them out. And there were Dutch prisoners here in the cloisters who made a real mess of the place, breaking windows and damaging the pillars. By 1653, the mayor of Salisbury was so fed up of dealing with this mess, he wrote to the government to ask them for their removal. So it was probably one of those pesky Dutch prisoners, perhaps yearning for his own cat at home, who made this little sketch. But despite this, the cathedral stayed intact. This was because the local gentry, who so loved the cathedral and hated to see the damage, secretly employed workmen to repair it. When asked who paid them, the workman answered, they who employ us will pay us. Trouble yourself not to inquire who they are, whosoever they be, they desire not to have their names. No. None of your business, I'm not going to tell you, basically. Cryptic. I hate additional words that are unnecessary, even if it's back in the time. Is the West Front, and according to the rather grand historian Alec Clifton Taylor, this is poor and insipid. Well, I think it's magnificent. It's a symphony of wonderful details stair turrets, spiralettes, lancet windows, quadrifoils, buttresses. Gothic, it's got gothic, it all. Gothic. 
Glad I learned what Gothic was. And once more, it's attracted a big crowd. There are 79 figures on the front. Seven are from the 14th yeah. century, but many were destroyed during the Civil War, so the rest are Victorian or later. You can see the bottom row quite clearly. How the hell do they chisel underneath and above without breaking this? How? The rest are Victorian or later. You can see the bottom row quite clearly. Here's St. George with a shield on his left elbow and a sword in his left hand. And in his right hand is the head of a dragon looking quite sad. There's St. Sebastian well, who's tied to a tree and shot with arrows. And you can see him here with his arms tied behind his back and pierced with three arrows. And look at this guy striking a pose. He's got his hands on his hips showing off his outfit. He's absolutely loving being out here on display on Salisbury Cathedral's west front. There are some beautiful buildings around the cathedral Lovely. too. This is Salisbury Close, which was mainly used to house the clergy. Today, the majority... I love brick houses, or even something like this, which I might even love more. With the ni brick houses, with the nice white window frames. Just so beautiful. The houses are leased from the cathedral by private residents. Salisbury Cathedral really has kept up to date with the modern world as it's got its very own 24-7 reality TV show. Estral. The contestants, though, I are a little birds. more feathery than usual as they come in the form of peregrine falcons. You can follow their every move by logging into the live stream of the Salisbury Cathedral website. And the cathedral is as active and changing as it's ever been, with new developments happening all the time. For example, until recently, the cathedral was without a font. The 17th century white alabaster font recently. Is this just like super old and faded, or is it a different sort of British flag? The cathedral was without a font. The 17th century white alabaster font, which used to be in the nave, was moved to a tiny country church 50 miles south of Adelaide in South Australia in 1870, where it stands to this day. After a century without a proper font, it was decided action needed to be taken. Adelaide so the, the cathedral Coast? commissioned this in 2008, which the newspapers enjoyed calling the funky font. It's this unusual green patinated Infinity bronze fruit. vessel shaped cool. in a sort of cruciform with a base of Purbeck stone. It creates this incredible mirrored flat surface. Perfect for skimming stones, I imagine. And of course, so the cathedral beautiful. was brought to the world's attention on the 4th of March 2018, when Sergei Skripal and his daughter Yulia were poisoned here with Novichok. Hmm? What? And here with 18, when Sergei Skripal and his daughter Yulia were poisoned here with Novichok. And it was here in the cathedral. At first I thought, I mean, it's still horrible. So I don't want to make it seem like I'm not saying it's horrible. But I, at first I thought it, they were... Were they British citizens? Well, maybe they were British citizens, so never mind. ...from January 2021 that the people of Salisbury came to receive their COVID vaccines a day after Lincoln Cathedral did the same thing. And whilst people were waiting for this life-saving vaccination, their visit was accompanied by heavenly music from the cathedral's magnificent organ. have it, the history of Salisbury Cathedral in a nutshell. It's one of the most fascinating places for any history fan to visit, so make sure you put it on your bucket list. And if you enjoyed this video, click subscribe so you don't miss the next one. See you next time. Yeah, even if, it, uh, if I didn't know anything about history, which I'm still learning English history, just architecture and just the feel of, of this place, I'm sure would be incredibly enjoyable to, to see. Uh, in person. I was much too talkative on my second half of the video, guys. Sorry about that. Um, love you all. Hope you guys are all doing well. Would appreciate any comments below. Would love for you to like and subscribe completely free. And hopefully I'll see you guys next video. Bye.